Our scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 62. Psalm 62, we uh, work, have been working our way through the Psalter last uh, Lord's Day, getting to Psalm 61. And considering that, this morning we consider Psalm 62. Please give your attention to the Word of God. To the chief musician, to Jeduthun, a psalm of David. Truly my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will you attack a man? You shall be slain, all of you, like a leaning wall and a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his high position. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. My soul, wait silently for God alone. For my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Surely men of low degree are a vapor. Men of high degree are a lie. If they're weighed on the scales, they are altogether lighter than vapor. Do not trust in oppression, nor vainly hope in robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. God has spoken once, twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God. Also to you, O Lord, belongs mercy, for you render to each one according to his work. Amen. We've all heard inspiring prayers, probably. I remember uh, some years ago listening to the prayers of a friend of mine named Mark and just felt like I was lifted uh, up into the presence of God and was greatly encouraged to hear his prayers. And uh, prayers like that, that we've all probably experienced, serve as examples to us and encouragements to us. They spur us on in the... Uh, quest of prayer. Well, in a similar way, the Psalms function as the prayers of godly men who, though they experienced trials like ours, knew how to cry out to the Lord. And so they serve as examples for us and teach us why to pray and also how to pray. And Psalm 62 is an example like that. It's a call to prayer we see right at the center of Psalm 62, a call to prayer. The writer says, Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. If you're like me, you need help in pouring out your heart before the Lord. And so we want to look at Psalm 62 very briefly to consider a few points in terms of the why and the how of prayer. So the psalmist gives a few reasons to pray. We notice in verse 9, he identifies this reason, that we are weak. Why pray? Well, because we're weak. He says, surely men of low degree are a vapor, men of high degree are a lie. If they're weighed on the scales, they're altogether lighter than vapor. And isn't that true? Yesterday afternoon, as we stood at the bedside of our dear brother John, we felt the reality of verse 9. He was, he seemed to us but a vapor. His breath seemed to barely change his body at all. We knew that he was one breath away from eternity. And the writer says, so it is with all of us. Our lives are but a vapor. And that's why we must pray, because we are weak. Prayer is a means of strength for the weak. The tragedy is that sometimes we feel too strong to pray. 
We feel that we're too robust. We feel that we don't need to cry out to God because we don't feel that weak. The psalmist says, pray because you're weak. Secondly, the psalmist teaches us to pray because, as he says in verses 3 and 4, we have enemies. And sometimes we're terribly naive about our enemies. The writer speaks of those who will attack a man, who consult to cast a man down from his high position, who delight in lies, who bless with the mouth but curse inwardly. Friends, the same is true today. There are principalities and forces and men who want nothing more than our downfall. We have enemies. And what we see is that David's prayers aren't whitewashed. They're not just sanitized uh, 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 prayers that fail to take into consideration the real enemies that he faced. His prayers are the silent gasps for help of a man in a pitched battle. We should pray because we have enemies. And then thirdly, we should pray, as verse 11 teaches us, because God is strong. We're weak, we have enemies, but God is strong. God has spoken once, twice I've heard this, that power belongs to God. Psalm 62 draws our affections also to Christ. Uh, as we see in verse 12, His strength is revealed in mercy and justice. God teaches us to pray because He is strong and powerful, uh, not only in His ability to act, but also in His mercy and His justice. Psalm 62 draws us to the cross. The whole psalm is uh, spoken from the perspective of a man who says, my soul silently waits for God. He reminds us of the Lamb of God who did not speak, did not revile on his way to the cross. We see the strength of God, the power and the might of God for us in the Lord Jesus. So the psalmist gives us several reasons to pray, but he also teaches us how to pray, because sometimes we're convinced of the need to pray, but we say with the disciples, Lord, teach us how to pray. And so the psalmist teaches us three things at least about praying in terms of the practice, the how. First of all, he teaches us, as we've already read in verse 8, that in prayer we must pour out our hearts before the Lord. And this is a, a potent image. The word pour out here can be used and is used in the Bible both literally and metaphorically. So if a person was going to pour out a bucket of water, he would use the same verb that's used here that says we must pour out our hearts before the Lord. So what we see is that there's, there's no filter. There's... Uh, no sorting of emotions. You pour out your heart to God just like you pour out all of the contents of a bucket of water. So we don't come to the Lord with sort of snippets and safe prayer requests. We pour out our souls before the Lord. It seems to me, as, as I reflect on my own prayer life, that this means that our, our public prayers uh, should have a degree of pouring out of our hearts but especially our private prayers. If, if we pray in private, the same way that we pray in public, we perhaps miss this command to pour out our hearts. David's prayer is a reflection of the burden that his heart was under. His prayer touches on every relational sphere in his life, he addresses in, in this prayer himself, his brothers, his enemies, and his God. And toward all of these, he pours out his heart. He doesn't hold back. He's not careful, you might say, in prayer. So the psalmist teaches us to pour out our hearts before God. Secondly, the psalmist teaches us here to announce our dependence upon God in our prayers. 
If we look at Psalm 62 as a prayer, then one of the things that we can't miss, for example, in verses 1 and 2 and 5 through 7, is that the psalmist is actually announcing his trust in his prayer. And we wonder if that's part of our habit. Do we, do we pray like this? Do we pray, Lord, from you only comes my salvation. You only are my rock and my salvation. You are my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Do we pray speaking to the Lord the confidence that we have in Him? See, God is pleased to hear this. Just like a, a father is pleased to hear that his children trust Him and depend upon Him and uh, know that, they'll, that they can expect good things from their father. So God is blessed to hear our dependence upon him. And we're strengthened. We're strengthened as we pray morning, afternoon, and evening, day after day, year after year, as we pray our dependence upon the Lord. You see, we, we do so speaking from faith, but at the same time being strengthened in our faith as we pray our dependence on God. And then thirdly, the psalmist teaches us as he writes in verse 10, to denounce idolatry in our prayers. We not only pray our dependence upon God, but we pray against our idols in our prayers. He writes this, Do not trust in oppression, nor vainly hope in robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart upon them. Brothers and sisters, God would ask us this morning, where have we placed our trust? Or rather, where have we misplaced our trust? On what besides God have we set our heart? When we reflect on these things, we should bring them into our prayers. Lord, I have trusted in my wealth. Lord, I have trusted in this relationship. I have trusted in my status, in my popularity, in my health. But I denounce these things. And I trust in you alone. In Psalm 62, we have the prayer of a godly man. We have even a prayer of Christ himself. So let us join him in prayer. Even as we have heard him pray, so let us pray. Understanding the great need to pray because of our weakness, because of our enemies, because of God's strength. And to follow him in prayer by pouring out our hearts. This morning we, we will not all have the opportunity to pour our hearts out, out loud. But even as we're hearing others lead us in prayer, we're, we're wrestling in our hearts. We're adding thoughts that the speaker isn't saying that pertain to our situation. And we're taking this with us as we go throughout the week, pouring out our hearts, announcing our dependence on God, denouncing idolatry, and being strengthened and quickened in the God of our salvation. Amen.